Welcome to Business Spotlight, where we share insights, reflections, and pearls of wisdom from local business owners. My name is Kerry James. I am a business coach and facilitator. And this morning, I'd like to welcome Managing Director of Flownamics, George Morrison. Good morning, George. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Yeah, very well indeed. Very well indeed. Thank you very much. Let's get stuck straight in, please, George. Flownamics, please give us a little bit of the history and what you specialize in at Flownamics. So Flownamics is a social media marketing company. Um, we do things like events, but we're very visual media based. Um, my background comes from a lot of contract work, a lot of freelance work. Um, and essentially after university and things like that, that's where I sort of started to drift towards. I was really inspired by the idea of actually just growing businesses and growing with businesses. And that's where we have sort of taken Flownomics today to a point where we actually focus on just growth and sort of growing with communities and businesses. And that's where Flownomics, that's what Flownomics is doing now. And that's what it's looking to do in the future. And so what do you, what do you specialize in particularly? Is it the social media side or what, 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 yeah. what's your target market, would you say? We're very, we're very, we're very much a creative service. Um, we, we see the value in how creative media, like filming, photography, um, even voice acting and things like that has a huge impact on how marketing works. Um, you know, gone are the days of doing like newspaper articles and things like that. It's a lot more visual now. And I think, as things are going on, it's becoming more important to have that um, represented through social media. So we manage uh, social media accounts for um, our clients, mostly through like a monthly rate. And then we also do a bit of events because, I mean, we've got all the staff for photography and filming. Um, so we don't want to just, you know, sort of only focus in social media. So we do do events as well. So we do things like power, like sport competitions, and, um, you know, all the way up to, like, uh, uh, concerts and gigs. Um, we really do have a, a wide scope, but mainly focusing around social media. Okay, great. And so you mentioned your clients. What might be a typical client for you then, George? Um, we're, we're massive in the sport industry at the moment. Um, that's So gyms and things like that. I'm a big fan of sort of, like, how, I mean, personally, I, for myself, one thing that's helped me quite a lot is fitness, keeping myself healthy and fit and so I sort of bring that into the business a little bit so we work with a lot of gyms and um, do personal trainers as well but we also work with yeah high street shops and we work with plenty of shops in Macclesfield where we're based and as well as quite a, um, a lot of places around one of our more bigger clients are things like um, industrial um, flooring and things like that um, and yeah, we, 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 we have quite a wide range. We, we've catered to a lot of businesses. We've had a lot of experience working in different um, levels as well, from very small local businesses to quite high corporations. But in my personal liking is really the SMEs down in the local businesses. I think that's where they need more help as well um, and where social media makes way more of an impact, um, essentially, yeah. Great. Okay. So, George, if we think about the last three years or so, you know, lockdown, a lot of economic change with interest rates uh, uh, and inflation, etc., and the digital resolution, uh, digital revolution. Sorry, I should say. How has that impacted on your industry? Would you say? Uh, well, COVID was really the making of the business. A lot of people say that you know, COVID. You mean COVID has destroyed a lot of businesses. It has destroyed a lot of work and how we do anything. Um, but with us. As a business, we we thrived. Um, it became more important for people to have an online community, to have an online engagement. And we also then had the time to actually do all this research. We didn't have to go anywhere. We were all sort of stuck inside. So um, that's where the business essentially grew because the business formally started two years ago. I was working in the industry quite a long time before that, um, even though I'm only 25. But really, I had all that time over COVID to actually grow the business. And then as soon as we were back out and in the open, um, sort of with a face mask, um, we were able to go straight into it and grow. And everyone else wanted to grow as well. Um, small businesses even now, it's very rare we find someone who actually is still being conservative with the resources towards online marketing because they know it's becoming more and more obvious it's the way forward. Sure. So the, the digital revolution is really... Help your uh, your situation, would you say? 
100%, especially resources. Um, we don't use Zoom a lot, but I mean, it's now kickstarted a lot of resources for team management and um, team sort of overview for like working at home. And that's that works perfectly for us. We have an office, but I mean, it's it's more costly to have us all in that room every single day, you know, in terms of commuting and everything, rather to work at home and then just include really more social occasions when we see each other. And then it keeps everything nice, light, and everyone enjoys it and feels more comfortable. Okay, great. Well, fantastic. Well done on starting the business during COVID. So what would you say here and now then, George? What are the key challenges to your business now? Um, I'd say the key challenges we have in the, in our industry is at, at the moment growth really for us is as much as we as much time as we put into it. We don't really have things like the rising cost in living crisis issue. That's more of a personal thing for me and my staff, and we try to compensate that as much as we can in um, you know paying fairly and paying ourselves fairly. And really, our only challenge is just other people they're they're struggling and um, you know if we were to go to a restaurant or especially anyone in the hospitality industry they especially aren't open to um even risking a small amount of money into marketing because they're more scared about that small outgoing to the potential incoming so we have that challenge at the moment that there's a massive fear mm-hmm. factor in the industry um of people you know, of some small businesses being too scared to actually market so that is one of the things we have noticed. I'll say that is one of the main problems we've got now. I wouldn't say there's many more issues right now. Right right now, everything is actually and has been very good for quite a while. Okay. What about your, your staff? You mentioned your staff. What about um, finding the right people and building your team? Any challenges in that area? Yeah. So when the business started, I worked through a lot of contracting. So um, throughout university, um, throughout college, high school, anything, um, you obviously make connections, you make friends, you know what your friends do. Um, so when it came to actually starting a business, formally getting people together and saying, um, look, I've got some freelance work for you guys. It was a big sort of learning curve of understanding the right people. And I think very quickly, um, I learned that the right people were sort of in tune with me um, as a person. So we've had people who have worked with us and not been professional. They might turn up without a wire that's pretty crucial for their camera or they might turn up and they haven't charged batteries or we might be borrowing equipment and they haven't kept it in good order and then immediately we have those people who are now working for us full time who are we you know we work for them from the start and every single time we worked we borrowed equipment it was charged it was clean it was ready and it was ready to go all the memory cards were wiped and it's perfect when if i needed them they were responsive for the messages they were and they're the sort of people we've hired and gone on with. And they're the people we also continue to give contract work to. I learned very quickly that just because they're a friend, it doesn't mean they're good to have in the business. And I think it's quite an obvious teaching, really. But as long as the per- as long as the staff are in line with my values, I don't have I normally seem to be able to bring the best out of them, they bring the best out of me as well. Great. That's that's great to hear about uh, using your values as part of your recruitment etc you mentioned being based in in macclesfield george how how uh, how focused are you on engaging with the local community i'm a massive fan of the local community i used to work at a charity called create back in 2019 just before covid and um, i worked as a youth worker i did a lot of because my degree was actually music originally um i and when i got out of university i sort of wanted to get straight into that industry I didn't want to sort of hold her around on a part-time job wanted to get straight in so I started working with this charity and it was one of the best experiences by far the best job I ever had and have ever had until starting my own business um I'm massively because of them I'm massively concerned about how certain things happen in the community so for example um, where I work in, in the office is we also share with a group called IDST we have supported them for quite a long time. They were originally a client um, we would get one-off works from, and I was a massive fan of what they were doing. It was just basically community art that was accessible to anyone. Um, essentially, you right now could go down to their 
center i think it's even tonight on thursday nights you could go and do a workshop it's entirely free and you would learn electronics you learn how to laser cut how to design you'll be part of a, an event that happens um and i thought that was incredible so yeah we support them with our social media they if they do an event we cover that um, and obviously share the space with them as well hey, excellent okay and what about thinking about the future george what are your aspirations for flow dynamics now my aspirations for Flow Dynamics is I'm a big, as I said earlier, I'm a massive fan of growth. And growth, I think, for small businesses is really, it's super crucial to do it in the right way. But I love the impacts it has. I love turning up at one of um, a small high street shop um, that sells, that isn't a typical high street shop, it's a craft shop that is here in Macclesfield. And when, when I turn up there and hear that they've hit their sales target, that they only set a couple of weeks ago. And people are directly saying they enjoy the social media. They saw these products through social media. They're seeing new faces who came from social media. That really is a drive. The second I leave that um that meeting, I'm immediately just ecstatic. And straight away I'm going, I'm already planning what's going what I'm going to do ahead for the future for that business. So in the next five years, my sort of idea is that locally um i want to be able to walk well, you know go to a nearby town like bollington or congleton and be able to just go and be able to look at these businesses that have helped grow and see them thrive and that is really what drives me so for the, in the next five years i just want to grow more locally um and help as many as we can and that's also why we're very competitive in our rates because i don't want people to miss out on this and at the same time i don't want people to be scared about growth i don't want people to have to think oh I'm, I'm scared to put this money into it i don't want to risk it i want them to risk it because it's, just, it's not too much of a risk when you go with us when we are going to get results and we do it at a good price as well excellent to hear that george i'm interested in your phrase growth in the right way tell me a little bit more about your thinking there please so a lot it's very it's very complicated with how people can do growth um you could go th- down website marketing and ads pushing adverts onto people's pages and um, personally i'm not a massive fan of that i think it's a beast that needs to be fed if i wanted to sit there and put a thousand pounds into adverts on my own page it would get a response but for that response to continue i'd have to continually throw in thousands and thousands of pounds and that does work it's great for online businesses things like um, embroidery and print houses who which sell shops for business itself clothes for like workplaces and things like that they need that they need a lot of online marketing but for the local high street for your restaurants for your gyms and um, they don't i don't really think they need that i think what they need is strong social media presence they need to build up a story build up a community of people in their local area and i think that's a lot more important than just throwing money down the drain um that never ends, you know. And the second you get don't get any more response, you essentially start putting more money down there. Whereas with us, it's essentially building a community that even if you were to have us on the books for six months, at the end of that six months, we would end, say if we ended at that point, their community wouldn't disappear. It would continue. And as long as they follow the principles that we often teach and guide our clients through, it would continue to grow as well although at a, steady, at a slower rate than if it was with us, because we're entirely focused on their growth, as they really should be focused on their own business, not their social media. Same with a, an accountant. You wouldn't sit there and try to become an accountant just because you started a business. You go and hire an accountant because they know what they're doing. It's the same thing. You know, you can get it done right, or you can try it on your own and not get the best results. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so... Moving on into your reflections and your learning, really, George. You said you meant you started the company two to three years ago. If you were giving yourself some advice now, based on your experience on that day that you started the business, what advice would you be giving yourself? I would. The main advice I would give myself is to sort of listen a lot and also. A lot of people use this term "work harder," uh, work smarter, not harder. And um, I have that. I have that problem quite a lot. I know that a lot of the time, I'd rather just sit and pull out a, a hundred hour week, as opposed to, you know, sitting there for a couple hours of that week and thinking things through and doing it a smarter way. And um, 
it's not a bad thing that I work hard. Like I'm, I'm happy to just sit and put the hours in. But at the same time, I think it would be benefit. It would have been beneficial at an earlier age if I sat there and went, "How can I do this quicker?" Whereas these days, I, I have to make sure I have half an hour every day to basically just make sure I'm not doing something slowly. I'm, I need to make sure I'm doing things fast. It's something I do as an exercise with all the staff every week. And we just need to make sure that we're all working efficiently. So what do you think the key ingredients are? Is it, is it better planning? Is it better daily discipline? What comes to mind in terms of those key lessons? Yeah, it can be a lot of things. So from training or just a lot of times imagining. One of the things that helps me a lot, uh, a good example is we do these competitions for powerlifters. And they, we often get around 3,000 photos and we have to do them into packages. So I, I used to, to scroll through hundreds and hundreds of photos and pick out the people and put them into their folders. And that will take about five minutes per person, five, 10 minutes per person. Um, and I sat there and I went, in a, in, a, in a world where I can imagine things, how would I make this faster? And I'd go, oh, well, I'd have a face detection. I'd, ha I'd have face detection. I thought, well, that, that, that problem exists. So I just went on there, did a bit of research and found the plugin that I can use to do face detection. And boom. It sped things up. So a bit of just self-reflection helps quite a lot. Just imagining what would actually speed this up and seeing if it exists just in the ideal world. And those sort of things help really, They that really does boost things along, but also a lot of research. Um, I, there's a big thing with video editors. Any video editor, any photographer or um, anyone who does filming or anything creative will turn around and tell you they can always do a job. They can, they'll always say, yeah, I can do it because chances are they'll go home, look it up on YouTube and learn how to do it. And I, I don't think there's any shame in that. I think being able to do that and then be able to actually, you know, deploy that successfully is a really good skill. And it's something that all of our staff do. If I say, can you do this? They'll say no. And then but the first thing they'll do is they'll go and straight, straight away go on YouTube and learn how to do it. They'll practice it, they'll research it. And then boom, we've got it. So there's never anything we can't do. And I think that's another... That's another big skill we have is that we are, we're never we're always open to training and research. Great. Well, we've done quite a bit of work with a guy called Frank Dick, who's a legendary sports coach. He used to coach Daley Thompson way back in the day. But one of his his the themes of his thinking is that a winning culture can only come from a learning culture. So it sounds like you're really focused on learning all the time there. Hundred percent. Yeah. Great. Okay. Just to finish off, then, uh, George. In terms of the uh, the viewers that we've got, would you like to make any sort of um, offer to to encourage them to get in touch with you and, and see if you could work with any of them? Yeah, of course. So our social media packages, as I've said, we're always competitive. We post a lot in terms of how much we post and how much content we create. We always outdo ourselves. That's always our task. We always say there's there should never be a memory card that's not full. Um, and ideally, um, we normally manage on a monthly basis. That's normally around three hundred and fifty pounds a month. But I'll be more than happy to do a thirty percent discount. So it's normally around two fifty for the first month, and then um, yeah, and then so I'm happy to do that as a discount. But yeah, as I said, um, we love seeing businesses grow. So it would be amazing to basically just say to someone, you know, it's not a big risk. It's two hundred and fifty pounds. Give it a go and see what see what impacts we can have. Um, oh. It never, it never... Sorry, just, just to clarify, what would be the key elements of that um, that £350 a month package? Um, so the key elements of the £350 a month package would be we manage your meta or um, your social media. That would include five posts a week, typically. Um, we also create, we also do two check-ins, two filming sessions a month. And we also provide quite a lot of content for you to use for stories because we don't cover stories, that's something which is a bit more personal. And we also give all the training pretty much on a monthly basis on current trends, from things that are working and what what's working, what's not in your business and things that we can help with. We also have a lot of uh, other ties that we also utilize. Again, we have journalists who we work with who we're more than happy to basically use to build your business as well. But mostly it is the five posts a week um, and two filming sessions a month and two check-ins as well. Very good. Okay, well, when we post this video, we'll make sure that we include a link uh, to your site then, George. So 
George, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for your time and your contribution today and all the very best with your business. Thank you very much.